And welcome back to the Ramble on the campus of Riverview High School. Doug Miles, Ed Schneider with you as we get set for second half action. Good uh, halftime show by both the Sarasota Sailor Band and the Riverview uh, Kilty Bands doing uh, their uh, full shows for the fans. They enjoyed it, but uh, set for a second half action where the Rams up 27-3. to Ed, uh, you got some halftime stats. We sure do, Doug. Uh, for Riverview, uh, 293 uh, total net yards unofficially, uh, led by uh, Kerry Higdon, the running back. 14 carries for 84 yards and a touchdown. And the star of the first half, Richie James, uh, 131 yards rushing on only 10 carries and two touchdowns on the ground, three for six passing for 85 yards and another uh, touchdown through the air. Uh, that's at 293 yards. For Sarasota, only 127 uh, net yards unofficially, 51 yards on 10 carries for Justin Austin, uh, three for nine passing for Colin McNeil for 73 yards. And that was it for Sarasota. Uh, so let's see if the Sailors are able to uh, find a way to get back into this game. And a kickoff picked up by uh, Austin, and he takes it out across the 40-yard line. Good return there by uh, Austin for the Sailors. So they'll get pretty good field position to start this third quarter of play, but uh, they are uh, facing a 24-point deficit right now. Let's see if they can put together a good drive here on their first possession. Well, if you're Coach Ed Bowles, all you can tell your uh, team is at halftime, is uh, let's go out and win the second half and uh, uh, carry that into our playoff game next week. Can't do anything about the first half at this point. Let's see if they come out fired up and ready to play. Spotted at the 39-yard line of the Sailors, moving from left to right here in this third quarter of play. I formation, McNeil turns around, hands it off to Austin, into the line, pushes ahead a little bit up across the 40, and uh, stopped around the 42, so about a three-yard pickup on first down for Sarasota who uh, managed just a 34-yard field goal in the first half by uh, Tom Kelly. 36-yard field goal, I should say. That made it 20-3 to at that point. Sailors looked like they might stop the Rams, but Rams got a big first down and then went in on a touchdown, James to Lexair, and uh, that's where we stand right now, 27-3. to Riverview, direct snap, McNeil rolling to the near side. Looks like he wants to throw it, throws deep and overthrown. The receiver well covered there. Dylan Cleveland, now a flag comes out. And somebody's going to be called for interference. Cleveland was uh, one against two there. Now he was definitely double teamed on that, Doug, and uh, it looked like uh, McNeil did the right thing and just uh, threw it away. And it is a holding call on the Rams, defensive holding. So they will mark it off from uh, the line of scrimmage. And it'll be a first down for the Sailors in Ram territory at the Ram 47. Right. It wasn't interference or couldn't have been interference because it wasn't a catchable ball. Uh, but uh, the defensive holding, it doesn't matter on that end. And uh, the Sailors pick up the uh, first down, uh, the initial first down of the second half on the uh, holding penalty on Riverview. So a fresh set of downs for the Sailors. Trying to get on the scoreboard in the end zone. They got a field goal. That's it. McNeil in the gun. Sean Bain in motion to the far side. Hand off Austin, and Austin dragged down from behind as he uh, maybe picks up a yard down to the 46. So did not fool the uh, Ram defense there on a little motion play there, but Austin kind of just diving ahead for one. Second down and nine now. Just underway, 10.45 left here in this third quarter. That yardage has been tough to come by uh, up the middle uh, for uh, Justin Austin, a uh, good job so far by the Riverview uh, interior defense. Double wide to the near side, one to the far side. McNeil takes the snap. Stops, looks, throw it to the far side. Short pass complete to uh, Austin, and Austin goes out of bounds near the first down marker across the 40-yard line down about the 38. Let's see, uh, it's going to be a little short, I believe. Yeah, about a yard short of the first down, maybe a yard and a half. So it'll be third and uh, short for Sarasota now at the 39 of Riverview. And everything is four down territory now for the Sailors trying to get back in this ball game. Now McNeil up behind center, I formation. A little motion by the uh, Rams there at, at the center. One of the uh, tackles looks like moved. I think one it was the uh, offside on yeah. uh, Riverview. Yeah, one of the linemen of Riverview moved. So that gives the Sailors a first down, down to the 34-yard line. A little help there by the penalty. Yeah, good time to go to the hard count there by 
Uh, Colin McNeil was able to draw him off sides and pick up the first down without having to snap it. Well, Sailors starting at their own 39 now at the 34 of Riverview. Big handoff. McNeil steps up in a pocket. Grabbed and could be a horse collar call here on Riverview. Flag came right out as uh, McNeil was grabbed by Nicholas Bernier. And it's going to know it's going to be against Sarasota. So they're calling a holding call on the Sailor. I thought they might have called for a horse collar on uh, Bernier bringing down McNeil. Uh, he was up around the headgear. Uh, I thought it very well could have been that call, Doug. Uh, but uh, it was as McNeil was getting pressure and he stepped up into the pocket uh, trying to find the throwing lane. Uh, and uh, it must have been right in front of the official there because that flag came out quickly. Uh, that moves uh, Sarasota way back. Sets up a first and tw uh, 25 situation now for the Sailors, barely in the Riverview territory. So back uh, around midfield now. McNeil takes the snap. Here comes the rush. Eludes one tackler, steps up in the pocket. Here comes another one, grabbing him on the shoulder and bringing him down. Right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of a yard, too. And uh, Franklin on the stop for Riverview. So uh, right back to midfield. No gain on the play. And second and 26 now for Sarasota. And McNeil really hasn't had any... Uh uh, enough time when when uh, they've tried to send the receivers deep. I think they need to go to the intermediate passing game and try to get it out of his hands quicker. McNeil in the gun. Two wide outs to the far side. One to the near side. Hand off. Austin finds a hole. Cuts through to the 45. Gets away from one tackler down to the 40. Looked like for a second he might uh, break a big one. Not a bad run, but uh, still well short of the first down. Down to the 40. And it will be a, a third and about 15 now. For the Sailors, coming down to eight minutes left here in this third quarter. Sailors need some points, and they need them in a hurry. Yeah, it looked like uh, Austin was going to break a big one there, but it was good pursuit there by Riverview to end up holding them to a 10-yard gain. Ball on the near hash mark. Sailors moving from left to right here in this third quarter. Double wides to either side of the line. McNeil takes the snap, looks to throw, throws to the far side of the field, has a man open, caught at the 20, to the 15, to the 10, inside the 10 before he's brought down. It'll be first and goal for the Sailors. And I didn't see the number of the receiver there. Was that DeAndre Butler? Butler made the catch. DeAndre Butler, uh, nice. First time uh, we've seen him catch one in a while. Nice pattern. Uh, got the uh, defender on his back, and McNeil played a nice pass in there with the big gainer. First and goal at the nine-yard line now. So Seattle's best opportunity of the night. Austin, handoff, left side of the line, plunging ahead down to about the seven or six. And the Sailors with a chance right now. Need to score a touchdown. They got pretty close midway through the second quarter, but uh, couldn't advance it much past the 20-yard line and had to settle for the 36-yard uh, field goal by Kelly. So uh, best opportunity right now. Second well, down and goal from the seven. Now they're in four-down territory, so don't be surprised if they keep it on the ground. McNeil behind center, eye formation. Here's a pitch to Austin outside, and he is going to be pushed out of bounds before he could cut up field. Good job by the Ram defense. Now they've used that play before successfully in earlier in this game uh, where they faked the dive inside and then uh, try to pitch it out to Austin to uh, uh, try to go away from the flow. But uh, two defenders are right there for Riverview to hold it to a one-yard gain, setting up a third and goal situation from the six-yard line. Sailors have kept the ball for five and a half minutes so far in this third quarter. And they're trying to cap it off with a touchdown here, third and goal from the six. Sailor fans trying to get their team a little encouragement here on the far side here's a, a little juke move by Austin goes to the inside then the outside and is he in for the score yes he, he is. is touchdown sailor beautiful job by Austin uh, nothing inside he was able to bounce it to the outside uh, off to his left uh, once he got out there there was no defenders in sight he was able to walk it into the end zone untouched uh, for the first touchdown of the game for the Sarasota Sailors they use almost six minutes of the uh, third quarter uh, following the uh, opening kickoff in this half to drive downfield and get the first touchdown on the board. Yeah, they go uh, 61 yards in 5 minutes, 52 seconds. 
for the touchdown. Extra point is up, and it is good. And with 6.08 left in the third, it's Riverview 27 and Sarasota 10. Yeah, nice play by uh, Justin Austin in that one. Uh, some smart running. Uh, it was all jammed up inside. Uh, he was able to quickly bounce it out uh, and uh, avoid uh, the de- defense and uh, get it into the end zone. Uh, a much-needed boost for the Sarasota uh, Sailors uh, team. Uh, I guess what Coach Voles must have told him at halftime worked. They were able to come down, keep it together despite some penalties, uh, and they uh, had a, a 25 yards to go on a first down uh, series and were able to convert anyways uh, and uh, move it into the end zone to get on the board with the first touchdown of the game. Narrows the margin to 27-10, to 10, Doug. Uh, now it's a matter of can they find a way to stop uh, Richie James and Karen Higdon uh, and uh, force a punt out of Riverview so they have a chance to get another score and get really back into this game. Do you go for an onside here, Eddie, or too early? Uh, too early for that. Uh, they need to try to play some defense, uh, try to first cover this kick. Uh, Kelly can give it a pretty good ride, so I would, I'd probably let him kick it away and uh, see if they can cover it, hold them down inside the 25, and play some defense. Yeah, Sellers have had a tough time stopping the Rams, so onside kick doesn't work. You're giving up great field position here. Now let's see what they do. Kelly approaches the ball with the right foot, and it's a short kick, and it's going to be fielded at the 27-yard line by uh, Grant O'Shea. And uh, O'Shea Grant, I should say, and a very short return. So not a bad job by the Sailors getting downfield to cover that. And uh, Riverview will start first and 10 at their own 30. Well, they didn't kick that one away, but uh, they did that a usual angle it to the uh, number and uh, kick it high and try to cover it. And that they did, kept it uh, just inside the 30 uh, starting position for the Riverview Rams, their first drive of the second half. Yep, Sailors keeping the ball for... About half of that third quarter on that scoring drive. First chance for Riverview on offense here here in the third quarter. Up 27 to 10 now. James Higdon hand a big hole up the middle. Straight ahead to midfield into Sarasota territory. Finally dragged down at the Sailor 42-yard line. That hole opened wide up, and Higdon just went through. Uh, that's a big uh, rips off about a 28-yard gain there on the first play of the second half for the Riverview Rams. As you said, Doug, straight up the middle. Uh, he was untouched before he got to the third level, and it took a couple defensive backs to, to run him down and uh, hold him there uh, just outside the 42-yard line of Sarasota. First down for the Rams. First down at the center, 42-yard line. Rams moving from left to right here in this third quarter in the uh, silver or gray jerseys with the maroon trim along the shoulders, maroon pants, maroon helmets. James takes a pitch, going to run. Big hole up the middle to the 30. And uh, dragged down at the 30-yard line. And another first down for Riverview. Looked like he was going to almost break that one free totally, but grabbed by the ankles. But another good run by the quarterback. Yeah, defender hanging on for dear life there, Doug, hoping his uh, buddies got there to help him. Uh, and that basically, uh, James took that through the same spot in the uh, defensive front uh, that Higdon did on the first down play. First down at the Sailor 30. No set of defense right now and must stop somehow. They have to keep Riverview out of the end zone here from getting any points at all. Try and close the gap closer than the 17 it is right now. Handoff will end around. Higdon inside the 20 to the 15 to the 10. Dancing on the near sideline. And it goes out of bounds at the 9-yard line. Well, they're not going to do it that way. Higdon just found a way again to pick up another first down, and it's first and goal for the Rams. Uh, they had the uh, the corner uh, blocked down beautifully. There were no defenders out there when he didn't turn the corner, and it took the uh, secondary to get the angle on him to get him out around the 9-yard uh, line uh, to keep him from scoring. Uh, three plays just like that. Sarasota's all the way down from, uh, the Riverview, rather, is all the way down to the 9-yard line of the Sailors, uh, threatening to score again. 4.46 left here in the third. Riverview looking to extend their lead back up to 24 points. And a wide receiver in motion to the near side. Hand off. Higdon goes up the left side. And this time he runs into about three sailors right at the line of scrimmage who push him back. So uh, well read there by the sailor defense. Not letting Higdon to find that open hole on the left side. 
Well, all four runs uh, this half have been on that left side of the uh, Riverview offense. That time the Sailor defense rose up and stuffed it, uh, actually threw it for about a two-yard loss, setting up a second-and-goal situation for the Rams. Pushes them back to the 11-yard line. And the ball on the near hash mark. Single wide out split to either side. Higdon in the backfield. Wide receiver in motion to the far side. James keeps it. Will pass to the near side. Complete. And it's going to be into the end zone for a touchdown. That is Dominic Caldwell. Nice little fake handoff to a pass to Caldwell. An 11-yard score. And the Rams back up and by Dom 23. Dominic Caldwell, the uh, backup uh, quarterback. Uh, got some uh, playing time early in the season when James was hurt. Uh, but uh, he, he's in there uh, as a wide receiver on that play, able to uh, take the quick pass out to the uh, sideline uh, from Richie James and get it into the end zone. And it took uh, Riverview all the five plays to come right back and answer that uh, opening touchdown drive of the third quarter that Sarasota put on the board. And the extra point is up and good. And with 3.55 left in the third quarter, it's Riverview 34 and uh, Sarasota 10. And they go 70 yards on that drive, Ed. In a matter of five about plays. Two minutes and uh, seven seconds. Not too shabby. Riverview offense is in uh, fine form. They look like they're tuned up, ready to go for the playoffs. Uh, I'm sure uh, Fort Pierce Central is here scouting them tonight, and I'm sure they're not showing everything they have, but. Uh, they're going to put uh, a little, think a little bit of fear into that Force Pierce uh, team uh, as they get ready for next week's opening round of the Florida State playoffs. Not going to be easy next week going across to uh, Port St. Lucie. Long road trip. Very tough Port St. Lucie team, but uh, Riverview trying to tune up as best as they can tonight and uh, be ready for them. Sarasota will be home next Friday night against the Pinellas Park Patriots. We'll have that game on our a live Ustream broadcast. Hope you can join us 7.30 next Friday night from Irig Field. Looking forward to heading back there. Our favorite, one of our favorite places, if not our favorite place to do a ball game. Deep kick. Taken at the 10. Austin to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Outside, to the 35, to the 40 along the far sideline at midfield. And pushed out of bounds as he crosses midfield. Uh, you could almost call a late hit there. He's heading out of bounds and kind of Extra shove there, but no flags come out. It looked like the kicker was able to uh, get him pushed out of bounds and, and save the uh, touchdown return. But uh, it's going to give uh, the Sailors great field position. Uh, Justin Austin showing uh, he can do more than just run it from the line of scrimmage. Uh, great return, gets it all the way out to midfield. Uh, and that's the Sailors up in uh, great field position to start their second drive here of the uh, second half. Right on the 50-yard line, 343 left here in the third. But the Sailors once again find themselves down by 24 points, scoring on their last drive nearly six minutes to start the third quarter. Austin, a six-yard touchdown run. McNeil going to be sacked back at his own 43-yard line, getting in there pretty fast. Donald Franklin, big 222-pound lineman, comes in there and uh, brings down McNeil, who uh, looks like he's shaking up a little bit, trying to get up. Is that McNeil? No, that's the, one of the Sarasota linemen, it looks like. One thing now Ed Volts has to be careful about. You don't want any of your any of your players to get hurt, particularly your starters. Got to be ready for next week. Yeah, you hate to see that at this point of the season. You hope it's not serious. Maybe just the wind knocked out of him, but it looks like they're stretching a leg out. That's usually not a good sign. Get a number for you in a second. He's on his back, so uh, try and find out who that is. Clock uh, stops, 323 left third. Yeah, one thing that helped uh, the Sailors turn around their season was more than just the announcement of Coach Ed Voles that he was uh, going to uh, retire at the end of the season. Uh, it was the fact that they had a lot of player, key players that were hurt midseason that were able to come back for the stretch drive, uh, and it really uh, bolstered the uh, Sailors' uh, lineup both offensively and defensively. So they were able to make that playoff run. Uh, you hope that uh, they don't lose any other players to injury here tonight so that they're at full strength uh, when they take on Pinellas Park next week in the uh, first round of the playoffs. So uh, Satters will 
have it. Second down and 16 at their own 44-yard uh, line. As they take the uh, injury timeout. The other player got up. I didn't see the number, but uh, appears to be okay. So uh, set to resume now. And a second and 16 facing Sarasota. Double wides to the near side, one to the far side. Austin in the backfield along with McNeil. That's Bain in motion now. Handoff. No, a fake handoff. And a deep pass over the middle and incomplete. Trying to uh, hit. Was it 13 Brennis, right? So to bring up a uh, third down now. And the Sailors have just not been able to get anything going on the passing game either. Well, anything that's taken uh, any amount of time, uh, such as a long pass, uh, McNeil's had pressure in his face pretty much all evening, uh, and he's had a scramble for his life, so uh, it, it's helped add to the uh, inaccuracy he's faced tonight. McNeil back to pass again, and he's going to be brought down. It looks like he throws the ball away. Let's see if he was in the grasp. Either way, it's an incomplete pass. And will they say he was sacked at the 40? Looks like that's where they're going to uh, spot it. Fourth down either way. And, uh, again, nearly uh, a horse collar on McNeil as they were trying to bring him down. And they called it incomplete. Incomplete pass. So it's going to be a fourth down here. Punting situation for the Sailors. So another punt for Sarasota. One hopper. Able to uh, scoop it up. Pretty good kick. And it's going to uh, bounce at the 20. Will not be returned. And rolled out about the 17-yard uh, line. And that's where the Rams will start. First and 10. Uh, best punt of the night for Sarasota. Unfortunately, uh, they had their best field position of the evening at the at midfield, and instead they ended up losing six yards on the first down sack and two incompletions resulting in the punt on fourth down. Give the ball back here to the Rams. Still 2.41 left in the third quarter. Riverview up 34-10. to 10. I think if they uh, tack on another uh, score here, you might see uh, some bench players here in the fourth quarter for Riverview. First and 10 at their 19-yard line. And a little player motion there. Moving one side to the other side on uh, the wide outs. And now uh, Todd Johnson's going to take a timeout. Yeah, that will make Coach happy that they couldn't get aligned properly coming out of uh, a change of possession. Uh, that's not midseason form or playoff ready. Uh, and uh, I'm sure they'll be uh, talking about that one uh, when they review the films uh, during next week's preparation for their playoff game. Todd Johnson, again, as we mentioned earlier, played in the Super Bowl a few years back with the Chicago Bears, played at uh, the University of Florida as well, also went to school here at Riverview, so returning to the alma mater and now with a chance to uh, go to the playoffs for his first trip to the postseason. Ed Volts. First time he's been with the play to the playoffs with Sarasota. So both head coaches, uh, big challenges ahead in the next week. Now we're set to resume. James, quick pass to the outside, complete, but uh, no gain there at all. Just a uh, little parallel pass there to Lorenzo Denny. And uh, now they're going to give him a yard on it. So second down and nine. Back at the 17-yard uh, line. Tried to get the quick uh, screen out to the uh, wide receiver, but uh, he uh, tripped himself up, uh, resulting in the short gain. Ball in the near hash mark. Fake handoff. Again, a pass to the near side. Complete to the 20, out to the 25, down the near sideline, out to the 35. Pushed out of bounds near the 40-yard uh, line. And that was Tyler O'Keefe on the reception. They ran that same play earlier in the game. Uh, the pass was incomplete. Uh, what it is, basically, it's a fake to the right side. O'Keefe lines up close to the line of scrimmage in the fullback position. 
uh, the quarterback uh, rolls out uh, to the uh, bootlegs uh, to the uh, weak side, and the fullback slides out there for the pass. That time he turns it into a nice gainer. First down, Riverview. At their own 36-yard line, down to a minute 53 left here in the third quarter. Hand off. Higdon up the middle, another big hole across midfield into Sailor territory down the near sideline. He could go all the way, and he will. 64 yards for Karan Higdon for the touchdown. That'll help the old rushing average, Doug. Yeah, once he got uh, out uh, on the uh, left side, he was able to make it to the sideline, and no one could get an angle on him. Showed great breakaway speed there as he raced down uh, the sideline uh, for the 54-yard uh, gallop. Uh, another touchdown run uh, for Higdon uh, and another score for the Rams. And uh, with the extra point, uh, looking to go up 41-10. Uh, to 10, And that might be uh, all we see uh, the Riverview starters here in this game. And Riverview goes 89 yards on that drive in a minute. And Higdon with a 64-yard touchdown run. And it makes it now 41-10 to 10 with the extra point for Riverview. And we will now see, Ed, I agree with you, a lot of the uh, second and third stringers now as uh, both teams just get ready for playoffs next week. Yeah, especially if you're a Riverview. I think uh, other than maybe a couple times where they haven't lined up properly and had to use timeouts, uh, the offense has been uh, in uh, fine form. Uh, they have some great speedsters uh, in Richie James and Karen Higdon. And uh, they're going to give uh, a lot of trouble to whoever they face down the road. Uh, certainly, Fort Pierce Central is going to have to try to figure out a way to slow them down, no doubt about it. And uh, getting close to a, perhaps a running clock situation, too, in the fourth quarter. Let's see if uh, Ed Volts agrees to that. I believe it's 35 points, but... Uh, Coaches can't agree to it, and I wouldn't be surprised just to kind of get these players off the field a little quicker than normal. It would help them get out of here without any more injuries, that's for sure. And here's the kickoff. Again, uh, staying with that short, high kick, fair catch by the Sailors at their own 36. And just a minute 41 left here in the third. Uh, that would be one area that I'd want to work on if I was Riverview. Uh, you don't want to be given uh, playoff caliber teams uh, field position outside their own 35-yard line. Uh, if you're going to kick that angled uh, blooper uh, to try to get some, a team to fair catch it, you at least want to get it inside the 30-yard line uh, and make them have to go at least 70 yards for a touchdown. Uh, but uh, that's about the only thing I think I can uh, fault the Riverview Rams on tonight, Doug. They've uh, played nearly flawlessly, certainly on offense, and defensively, uh, quarterback Colin McNeil has been running for his life pretty much all night. And they will line up with uh, two wide outs to the far side, one to the near side. McNeil back to pass. Here comes the rush. Throws a little quick pass over the middle, complete to Austin. Gets out to the 45 and up near midfield. And good enough for a first down for the Sailors. Actually, that was uh, not Austin. That was Silver Brenna's on the reception. Now they line up with no huddle. Three wide outs to the far side. None to the near side. McNeil, direct snap, rolling out. Far side, here comes the rush. Reverses his field, back to the near side. Trying to look for an open receiver. Throws across the body, has a man there. And Dylan Cleveland looked like he was tripped up. He's looking for a flag, but nothing coming. Uh, yeah, he definitely was tripped up uh, trying to go for that pass. Uh, if he wouldn't have got tripped up, I think he could have got there and made the play. Uh, no foul, uh, no penalty flag uh, by the referee. It was right in front of him. The Sarasota fans aren't real happy about that one, but uh, it's time for me to come up with my usual. There is a flag back here, Doug, and yeah, they're calling it against Sarasota. Yeah, they drop it way after the uh, well after the play was over. So the Sailors getting the double whammy. You don't get the call downfield, and instead get the uh, penalty uh, in the backfield, and the ball gets moved back. Uh, they will get the down over. I believe it would be first and 15 here, but uh, that looked like it should have been a uh, interference call downfield. Yeah, no doubt about it. About the official saw it differently, and now it is first and 15 back at the uh, Sailor 42. 
As McNeil takes the snap, runs into his uh, running back. He tries to hand it off, and uh, that will uh, result in a loss of a couple of yards. Couldn't quite get the uh, rhythm going there. And uh, loss of one on the play. Back to the 41. So it'll be uh, second down and 16. 35 seconds left here in the third quarter. Sailors late getting the play in here. Let's see if uh, they can get it off here before uh, taking too much time. Get one more play off. They uh, will get it done. McNeil steps up in the pocket. Now in trouble. Tucks the ball away. And uh, ripped down by the jersey at uh, the 46-yard line. His own 46. After maybe a three-yard pickup. He's lucky he went down when he did. Uh, there was a Riverview defender uh, flying towards him that just missed him. Uh, it picks up about... Uh, Four yards on the play, uh, and that will be the uh, end of the third quarter, Doug. After three, it's Riverview 41, Sarasota 10. As the teams will uh, switch ends, Riverview uh, well on their way to their seventh win of the season. Remember, the Rams had uh, one game canceled. That's one we were supposed to do, Eddie, back early in the season right here at the Ram Bowl against uh, Booker. Thunderstorms came through, so that's why they're only going to have nine uh, regular season games. Well, Doug, uh, you're right. And probably that was probably the, at the time the best thing that could have happened to Booker. We had seen him the week before get blown out by this same Sarasota team, uh, 41 to 13, I believe, something of that nature. Yep. And uh, if ever you put it, would have put another uh, shellacking on him, it might have, uh, uh, you know, really uh, done big harm to him uh, psychologically for the rest of the season. Instead, the game got called off. Booker had time to uh, regroup and and focus on some practice. Uh, and they went on to have a uh, a good season, uh, turn that season around and, and make the playoffs. So. Third down and 16. And there's McNeil throwing it deep down the far sideline, and it is incomplete. Ball a little bit under throw, nearly intercepted. And now fourth down. As we just get underway here in this uh, fourth quarter, clock not running, so uh, no running clock so far. Again, uh, Ed Volts could have agreed to it if he wanted to. Usually, it's 35 points uh, in the third, in the fourth quarter that they would go to well, a running I, clock situation. Well, I think uh, I think the Sarasota coach would have to agree to it, and I think maybe Ed Volts wants to try to maybe play this out. See and they could work on some things. Can it's a possibility. Rally. High short punt. Bounces at the 30-yard line and uh, forward down to the 33 of Riverview. And that's where the Rams will start their first possession here in the fourth quarter. Just uh, 21 seconds in. Rams are the record of, uh, as we say, will be 7-2 and two and 2-1 uh, two and one in the district. Sarasota will uh, fall to a 5-5 five and five record, but more importantly, they won... Those key district games, three of them in a row after dropping their first one to uh, win the district outright last week against Lakewood Ranch. Big win, 41-14 to at Irick Field. There's a pass to the near side, overthrown and incomplete. And a new quarterback in the game for Riverview. That's uh, Dominic Caldwell, who caught a touchdown a little bit earlier in the game. Yeah, good uh, idea getting uh, James out of there uh, with the 41-10 lead. Uh, no point in uh, risking him getting injured here uh, since he is the motor that drives this Riverview offense. Uh, and let's see, uh, there's some other uh, Riverview substitutions in there. Uh, I think the starters have earned a, a break here in the fourth quarter, uh, and it never hurts to get your uh, backup some uh, quality playing time. Second and ten. And there's a handoff straight up the middle to the 40, to the 45. In Sailor territory, brought down inside the 45-yard line. And uh, that was O'Shea Grant on the carry right up the middle. First down, Riverview. And that was uh, just off the left side again. 
uh, of the Riverview offense, the right side of the Sarasota defense, uh, which has been uh, gouged all night. Uh, that's where many of the big plays have come from. Uh, that's one area uh, Coach Voles is going to have to work on if they get ready for the playoff game next week. First and 10, Rams at the center, 45-yard line. Less than a minute into this fourth quarter, Rams up 41-10. to Hand off again to uh, Grant up the middle. Down inside the 45 to about the 43, about a two-yard pickup. And uh, Sailor Band getting up, playing a little music. Kilty Band also, great job uh, here tonight by both the high school bands. Keeping the fans entertained, but uh, Sailor fans not too happy tonight. But uh, they can uh, know next Friday night uh, they're going to be home for a big playoff game, so they can't get too down. But Again, this is a huge rivalry game, but the Riverview is going to have the bragging rights for another year. Handoff. O'Shea Grant this time is going to be brought down for a loss in the backfield back to midfield. Loss of about four. And I'll bring up a third down. And 12. A lot of teams in Sarasota, Manatee County making the playoffs this year. Some teams that have not been there in a long time. A Riverview, of course, we mentioned that since 08. Uh, Sarasota since 07. Booker, uh, first time they've made the playoffs in uh, about six years. I think since they went to uh, the state title game. Right. Palmetto also, of course, Manatee in there. Venice. So a lot of good playoff football coming up next week. Caldwell's going to be sacked back at the 45-yard line. And uh, Anderson on the stop for Sarasota. Big David Anderson gets in and grabs the quarterback, brings him down. And that'll bring up a fourth down and long for Riverview. And the high school football season seems like we just started, Eddie, late August. And already we're coming into the playoff season. It's a long road, though, between... Uh, First playoff game and getting all the way to that state title game in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl on December 13th or 14th. Got to win a lot of games. Against a lot of good teams. You look at the uh, playoff bracket, it's amazing how many great programs there are in the state of Florida. A lot that's of a beautiful punt. Nice high kick, fair catch called for at the 10-yard uh, line. And we'll kind of look at the brackets coming over tonight, Ed, and a lot of those schools that uh, you kind of see every year. In the semis or the finals up at the Citrus Bowl, they're in there again, winning their district. So uh, a lot of tough competition coming up. Last year we thought Manatee was going to uh, roll all the way to the finals and win it all. The dominant team last year, but uh, they didn't make it. Looked a little bit better this year, but uh, who knows? They could run into a buzzsaw again. You never know on these playoffs. Now we were looking at the, their district, and uh, it is uh, stacked with excellent teams, including uh, Plant High School out of Tampa who's won a number of uh, state championships in the last several years. Handoff as the Sailors start first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. No room there for Austin. Right at the 10-yard line he's brought down. You see teams like Dwyer and uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. A lot of great teams from the uh, other side of the state. You never know really how good another your team is until you go up against some of those teams from uh, the Miami or Fort Lauderdale or Palm Beach area. Yeah, Manatee had a rally from a 21-0 uh, deficit to pull out a win against University High School two weeks ago. So it goes to show you the depth. A lot of great talent down here in Florida. And here's a uh, pass to the far side, overthrown. And uh, trying to hit Cleveland over there around the 28-yard line, but uh, goes out of bounds incomplete. Third down and 10 now as we come down to the 8-minute mark. 8.06 left here in the game. Last year, as we mentioned earlier, we saw the Pinellas Park Patriots uh, had a chance to go up and uh, see that game against uh, Venice went up there to beat them in the playoffs on the road. A team that last year was uh, pretty much exclusively running out of the wing tee at. Uh, very few passes in that game. I coached pretty much the on the ground back in high school. So. I don't know if we'll see that again, but uh, we were kind of surprised seeing that formation pretty much every play. But Venice uh, had a pretty uh, pretty easy time of winning that game last year in the playoffs before they went up against Manatee. 
Yeah, if you don't have a good power offense, uh, uh, you try to use a wing T formation, which uses a lot of bootlegs and waggles uh, to try to get mismatches and to get to your quarterback out of the pocket and have an opportunity to throw the ball down the field a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, a good uh, power defense team like Venice was last year should be able to handle that. Sailors don't make the first down, so they're going to punt it from their own end zone here. Low snap. Picked up, though. Nice job. And uh, it's going to bounce at the uh, Sailor 40 and go ahead to about the 41. That's where it'll be down there. So Riverview will get possession inside the Sailor half of the field and uh, seven minutes and 16 seconds left here in the ballgame. Well, Doug, Sarasota's had three possessions uh, since their uh, opening drive of, of 61 yards for a touchdown to start the third quarter. Uh, in those three possessions, they've totaled a net of three yards. So that goes to show you the job that <laughs> Riverview has done here in the second half, shutting down the Sailors after that opening drive. Yeah, so Sailors never really looked into this game. Uh, you mentioned, Ed, they, just, they look lethargic out there, came, to, uh, came awake a little bit uh, in the second half, but uh, Riverview just uh, turned it up a notch. As O'Shea takes the handoff down to about the 36. Picks up about uh, five yards on that carry. But uh, since then, they have just uh, just trying to get this game over with right now and regroup and practice during the week. Put it beside you, put it behind you, and forget about it. Doesn't mean anything anymore. And focus on next Friday night. And another five yards is going to be added on to this. Penalty on Sarasota. Face mask, I believe, was the call. Down to the 30. And Riverview first down at the Sarasota 30. Put the clock back in motion. Dominic Caldwell, backup quarterback in for the Rams. Turns around, hands it off. And O'Shea Grant again on the carry down to the 26-yard line. Clock can't move fast enough for the Sailors, Ed. No, they, they want to get out of here. <laughs> you can just tell hands on hips and uh, let's just get out of here. Bus is parked in front. Let's go home. Well, you wonder how uh, a team that hasn't been there is going to handle success like they did uh, winning the district title last week. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're still uh, having a bit of a uh, hangover from that uh, yep. victory, and uh, they weren't ready to go tonight. Nope, even though it is a huge rivalry game, just never quite looked into it. O'Shea Grant on the left side, right side, and gets down across the 20, down to the 15, tripped up there. So a first down for the Rams as the second stringers, they're moving the ball now on the ground. Yeah, quick 11-yard uh, pickup there for Grant uh, off the right side uh, as the uh, Riverview backups look like they know how to play, and uh, they're trying to get their own touchdown here uh, midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah, second stringers want to say, hey, we scored a game in the big uh, rivalry contest against our nemesis, the Sailors. So a little pride still there for the second stringers. Caldwell. O'Shea. And uh, he takes it inside the five. Still on his feet down around the three or the two. And uh, it'll be a first and goal for the Rams. Actually, though, that was, uh, no, that was O'Shea. I thought they said Higdon for a second, but that was O'Shea. First and goal at the three-yard line. Yeah, the Sailor defense looks demoralized. Uh, they can't wait to get out of here and uh, start thinking about next week. Well, Higdon is back in the game now. So uh, they're going to give him a chance to score here, I would imagine. Caldwell to Higdon, and he just goes in pretty much untouched. And a touchdown for Karan Higdon. Would have been nice if uh, O'Shea Grant had a chance to score there, Ed, but uh, Higdon wants, uh, they want to give Higdon the, uh, the stats there, I guess. I guess. Uh, maybe Higdon's working on some kind of season-long stat. Not sure about that one, but in any event, Higdon gets the uh, score. And the extra point try by Keisler. High snap. Holder's going to have to uh, stand up and uh, try and go for two and tosses it into the end zone. Incomplete. He was tackled out of bounds. And there's a flag on the play. Let's see what they call on that. 
Might call it against the Sailors for a uh, high tackle, maybe around the helmet there. It was very high on on the holder, roughing the holder or the passer. That's the indication. Oh, okay, intentional grounding. All right. I thought for a second he did the roughing the passer <laughs> signal. That's the intentional grounding, but it doesn't matter. So the extra point no good with 5.05 left in the game. It's Riverview 47 now and the Rams 10 and the Sailors 10. Yeah, that was only a 41-yard touchdown drive as they took over uh, in Sarasota territory after the short punt. Uh, it took them all of uh, six plays, or five plays plus a penalty uh, to knock that one in the end zone. And uh, uh, the Rams have not uh, had uh, many long drives, Doug. They've been pretty quick. Uh, big play team, the Riverview Rams, uh, and most of it on the ground. Uh, that gets harder to do as you move up through the playoffs. So uh, we'll see if they can... Uh, get uh, Richie James and Hignan loose like that uh, against uh, Fort Pierce Central next week. But uh, that must have been quite a game, Doug, that we didn't see. Uh, second game of the year uh, at Venice. Uh, these Rams lost to a quality Venice squad 14-13 to on the basis of a missed extra point. Yep. So uh, they slugged it out with Venice uh, blow for blow. Uh, that tells you something because Venice is definitely – one of the top teams we've seen this year. Yeah, former uh, district opponents, but uh, Venice now in a different district. So, uh, And they've got a real chance to do, make some noise in uh, Class 6A. They've dropped down a, a classification, and uh, they're one of the top-ranked teams in that class. Venice, as we mentioned, up in Armwood in Tampa next Friday night. Oh, they had to go on the road since uh, they lost a tough one to the Largo Packers. Tough loss there. Here's the kickoff. And fielded at the 24, and uh, that's about all they're going to get. Uh, back to the uh, Venice Indians, Doug. Uh, you're not going to uh, need to wait long to see uh, if they have true playoff hopes or not because that Armwood program is another historic program similar to Tampa Plant. Yep. Several uh, state championships in the last uh, handful of years themselves up at Armwood. Uh, and uh, it's not where you necessarily want to start the playoff run, but... If you can get by them, it shows you have a real chance to go a long ways in the uh, state playoffs. Satters now with the ball at their own 25. Just four minutes, 38 seconds remaining in this rivalry game. And uh, here's a handoff. Tony Esmond. Or is that? No, that was Billy Sadlow. 23. He gets a chance to carry the ball. Picks up about four yards. Out to the 29-yard line. Second down and six. A couple of wide receivers put to the far side, none to the near side. McNeil. Sadlow again up the middle. Nothing doing there. And a push back for a, about a couple of yard loss on that play. A good idea, I think, to give Justin Austin a the rest of the night off. Uh, he's worked hard. Uh, didn't have a lot of uh, yards tonight on the ground, but uh, did have some nice yardage on some pass receptions to at least try to keep the Sailors in, into this game as long as they could. Scored the touchdown, the lone touchdown for the Sailors. Six-yard run off that uh, nearly six-minute drive to start the second half. The only other points was a, a Tom Kelly 36-yard field goal. That's been it for the Sailors tonight. They put a 40 one last week against Lakewood Ranch. Here's McNeil throwing deep down the far sideline, and it is incomplete. Trying to hit Sean Bain over there, who has been uh, held without a reception tonight. No, I think right? he, I think he caught one did, did that he get one, one early? early in the game, that 33-yarder yeah. down that same sideline. Right, you're right. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, really, McNeil hasn't been very much on target. He's had some open receivers at times, uh, and he hasn't been able to connect. And uh, the rest of the time. Uh, he's been running for his life and under pressure. So uh, a combination of uh, good pass coverage by the uh, Ram secondary and uh, good pressure up front uh, by the uh, Ram defensive line uh, has made it a tough night for Colin McNeil. And the Sailors will punt it away. Good snap. And the kick will bounce at the uh, Riverview 45 and roll down to the 40, down to the 39 before it stops. And that's where the Rams will take over. They will uh, 
Now they're going to stop the clock at 2.19. I thought they were going to do a running clock there. 2.19 left. And the Rams will finish out this game here. A couple of snaps. And after that drive, Doug, that gives Sarasota nine net yards after their uh, opening uh, drive of the uh, third quarter uh, on their last four they got a lot of practice punting tonight, if nothing else. Now that, that's an area they certainly need to work on, no doubt about that. Caldwell. O'Shea on the handoff into the middle of the line and uh, runs into a bunch of sailors at the 40 after a one-yard gain. As we come down under the two-minute mark, sailor fans, have uh, most of them have gone. A lot of festivities, though, before the game. Uh, I believe they had an uh, alumni flag football game between the two schools. They had uh, a barbecue uh, some uh, games and everything set up in the side field. So uh, great afternoon of uh, fun here at Riverview, but not so much fun for the Sailors tonight. A festive atmosphere before the game, but not very festive for the Sailors uh, once the kickoff uh, occurred. As the Riverview Rams have uh, thoroughly dominated this game right from the start. Uh, they started out with uh, two quick touchdown drives, each lasting four plays, and quickly were on top of the Sailors 13 to nothing. Uh, and it's been uh, all Riverview since at that point. Sailors wanting a shore leave it. Uh, they want to just leave, that's for, for sure. Very good. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're ready to go. Uh, they need to get this game behind them as quickly as they can, start looking forward and thinking about Pinellas Park and trying to come up with their first playoff victory in a long time. Yeah, handoff uh, was another short pickup on second down, third and long now as we come down to should be the final play with just 40 seconds remaining here in the ball game. Caldwell, O'Shea bounces outside, eludes one tackler, gets down to the uh, four, up to the 42-yard line, and uh, that should do it. On fourth down, I don't think they're going to even bother with the kick here. Clock will run out as the uh, Rams celebrate on their sideline. Ram fans giving their team a standing ovation, although a lot of them have left as well. And uh, what we hoped would be a close, tight rivalry ball game just didn't materialize tonight. But uh, congratulations to the Riverview Rams. They finish up their regular season with a record of 7-2, and 2-1 two, two and one in the district. And the Sailors finish up at 500, 5-5, five and five, but 3-1 uh, and one in district play. Both teams heading to the playoffs. And the final score, Riverview 47, Sarasota 10. And quite a performance by the Riverview Rams in this rivalry battle. Uh, they, uh, as I mentioned, dominated the uh, Sailors from the start. Uh, Sarasota couldn't get anything going offensively uh, in that first quarter. But Riverview had no problem scoring two quick touchdowns uh, on four play drives each, uh, featuring uh, the running of uh, Richie, quarterback Richie James and uh, tailback uh, Karen Higdon. Uh, they were able to uh, thoroughly dominate the uh, uh, Sarasota Sailors tonight. In a battle of playoff teams, the first time we've been able to say that uh, in a long time in this rivalry. Uh, but uh, Riverview looks ready to go. Uh, they have to take the long trek across state. Uh, we wish them well against uh, Fort Pierce Central High School next week and like to see them come back with a victory. Uh, and as for the Sarasota Sailors, they need to forget about this game, uh, lick their uh, wounds and uh, get healed quickly and uh, get ready to go and uh, uh, take it to the Pinellas Park Patriots. Uh, at home on Friday night. We will be uh, at Irick Field next Friday night for the uh, Sailors hosting the Pinellas Park Patriots. We'll be on the air at 7.30 on our live Ustream broadcast. Again, all of our games available uh, on uh, iTunes and uh, also at YouTube.com. So uh, we hope you join us then. Uh, don't forget our Press Box show available at YouTube and at MaxPreps.com. Final score again tonight from the Rambo at Riverview High School. Riverview Rams 47, Sarasota Sailors 10. For Red Schneider, this is Doug Miles saying thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you again next Friday night. Good night.